Good morning, Mr. Smiley, sir. I haven't seen you for quite some time. Good morning, Mr. Carson. All's well, I see. Uh, yes, sir. Bring me my little box, will you? I shall be in the library. Pleasure, sir. For the time being, thank you, Mr. Carson. I'd like to look around, if I may. Little red spots from being sold. If I might have a word with Mr. Bernati. Oh, I'm afraid Signor Bernati is fully involved right now. Would you tell him it's Mr. Angel, Alan Angel? He does know me. Got an angel for you, as in paradise. Got it, Angel? Mr. Bernardi says that you can go down. Why, Mr. Angel, what pure pleasure, sir. It has been far too long. Come in, please. After you, Signor Bernardi, I insist. So how's trade, Toby? We've been lucky, George. We've had a fantastic summer. Autumn, George. 
Autumn, I would say, was on the slow side. One must live off one's hump, actually. Some coffee, George. No, thank you. Vladimir's dead. Shot dead on Hampstead Heath. Too bad. That old man, huh? Too bad. Oliver Lakens asked me to sweep up the bits. As you used to be the group's postman, I thought I'd have a word with you. Sure. You knew then about his death? Read it in the papers. Any theories about who did it? At his age, George. After a lifetime of disappointments, you might say. No family, no prospects, the group all washed up. I assumed he had done it himself, naturally. Naturally. Anyway, you didn't do it, which is nice. <laughs> George, you crazy. Shouldn't this be numbered, Toby, if it's a Degas? Degas. It's a very grey area, George. You've got to know exactly what you're dealing with. But this one is genuine? Totally. Would you sell it me? What's that? Just out of academic interest. Is it for sale? If I offered to buy it, would I be out of court? I don't be ridiculous. We're talking thousands. Know what I mean? It, uh, like a year's pension or something. George, listen. At a certain age, a man's got to be what he deserves. I spent 15 years at the circus trying to be an English gentleman. <laughs> you know what I am now? A cheap Austro-Hungarian in expensive clothes. I've come home. When was the last time you had anything to do with Vladdy's network, Toby? George, George, the name is Benati, okay? I'm not called Hector. Definitely not Toby, yes, there is it. I have an alibi for every day of the year, hiding from my bank manager. You think I want trouble around my neck? Emigres, police even. This is an interrogation, George. You know me, Toby. Sure, I know you, George. You want matches so you can burn my feet? It wasn't suicide. It definitely wasn't suicide. I saw the body, believe me. That's the worry, you see. Cause and effect. Toby quarrels with Vladimir one day, Vladimir gets shot with a Russian gun the next. In police terms, that's what they call an embarrassing chain of events, in our terms too, actually. George, what the hell is quarrel? I never quarrel with the old man in my life. Mikhail says you did. You go talking to Mikhail? You got some pretty lousy friends suddenly. <laughs> I'm embarrassed. According to Mikhail, the old man was very bitter about you. Hector is no good. What happened to make Vladimir so passionate about you? I'd like to keep it away from the police, if I can, you see. And Saul Enderby, if I can. George, kindly answer me something. Who is speaking here? Is it George Smiley? Is it Oliver Lacon? Who is speaking, please? You met Vladimir. What happened? You tell me that, and I'll tell you who's speaking. <sighs> Vladimir put up a distress rocket. Not through the circus, surely. Through friends of mine. When? Two weeks ago. He has to see me immediately, like he's stolen the Kremlin codes. A crash meeting. Where? In the science museum, top floor. All those aeroplanes. A lot of kiddies eating crisps. And he put a proposition? He wanted me to play courier for him. Carry what? He was not precise. It was documentary, it was small, no concealment needed. And the where did Vladimir tell you that too? Germany. Which one? Ours, north of it. Hamburg. It was a private arrangement. No circus involvement till we'd done the job. And the compensation for your labors? First, we take the document to Max. That's you, George. Max would know its meaning. Max would reward us. Gifts, promotion, medals. Maybe we get lunch with the Queen. <laughs> Only problem was, Vladimir didn't know you were on the shelf, and the circus had joined the Boy Scouts. 
Finito. Cigarette, George? You smoke these days? Glass of sherry, maybe. You want to drop this line of inquiry, George? That is my strong advice to you. Abandon it. The point is, you sent him packing. He appealed to you, and you slammed the door in his face. And you want to know why, maybe? Remember the name Otto Leipzig, by any chance? Fabricator, intelligence peddler, confidence man, sex maniac, pimp, holder many times of our Creep of the Year award. Remember that great hero? It wasn't all fabrication, though, was it? His Moscow Center material, for instance, I don't remember we ever faulted him on that, ever. Vladimir trusted him implicitly. On the Moscow stuff, so did we. George, where the hell are you going with your mind? And he had a partner. Yes, that comes back to me, too. An immigrant, an East German. <laughs> Worse than East German. Saxon. Name of Kretschmar. First name, Klaus. Klaus with a C. <laughs> Don't ask me why. I mean, these guys have no logic at all. Klaus Kretschmer was also a creep, a blonde creep, a lot of muscles. But that was long ago, Toby. Who cares? It was a perfect marriage. Then I expect it didn't last. How is she, George? Fine, it was fine. George, listen. Who are you fooling? OK. George, listen to me once, please. OK? Maybe I'll give you one selector. George, I owe you. Now, you've got to listen. So you pulled me from out of the gutter once in Vienna when I was a stinking kid. I was a Leipzig, a bum. So you got me my job at the circus. So we had a lot of times together, stole some horses. You remember the first rule of retirement? No moonlighting, no fooling with loose ends, no private enterprise, ever. You remember who preaches this rule? At Sarat, in the corridors? George Smiley did. Quote, when it's over, it's over. Pull down the shutters, go home. Unquote. We're over, George. We got no license, they don't want us anymore. Forget it. So, Anne gave you a bad time with Bill Hayden. So there's Carla. Carla was Bill's big daddy in Moscow. I mean, George, I mean, this gets very crude. You know what I mean? It puts a strain on friendship. Otto Leipzig gave a party recently. Recognize any of his guests? Who's the second man, Toby? George, listen. You've got to give this up. The crowds have all gone home. Who is he? George, pay attention to me, please. Now, you listen. People forge things like that these days. You don't understand these matters. You do not buy photographs from Otto Leipzig. You don't buy Degas from Signor Banati. You follow me? Is this a forgery? I hope so. Leipzig had a man called Kirov in play, a Russian intelligence officer based on Paris. Is this Kirov? Yes, it could be. And is? Sure. You don't want to get caught between those two, George. You're too young. Leipzig traveled a lot. How did we raise him if we needed him? For crash meetings, we contacted Klaus Kretschmer. Now, George, for God's sake, please, hear me once. So how did we reach Kretschmer? He's got a nightclub, no more a cat house. We left a message there. What's he called? Kretschmar's nightclub, what's he called? The Blue Diamond, the Blau Diamant. In Hamburg? Sure, it's up our end, the clean side. Now, George, don't do it, OK? Whatever it is, drop it. Cheers, love to have. What else did Vladimir tell you about Leipzig's information? 
Nothing. He said the Sandman was looking for a legend for a girl. Like before, by George, please. That guy. You know why they call Carter the Sandman, don't you? He has a way of putting to sleep whoever comes too close to him. Like Vladimir, for instance. Ever seen one of these before? From a lady. She wrote to Vladdy asking for help. She wants a magician sent her. She thinks she's going to be killed. 15th district. George, do me a favor, okay? You want a Hungarian babysitter someday? Call me. You go messing around with creeps like Kirov and Leipzig. You better have a creep like Toby look after you. You're an old spy in a hurry, George. You used to say they were the worst. Oh, they are, Toby, they are. Don't tell me I was speedy. Oh, I wouldn't dream of it, sir. Uh, you remember me, sir, Ferguson. I used to head up the transport pool in the days when you were chief. And what are you doing now I'm not chief? General factotum, sir. Part-time. But still on the side of the angels. I didn't know we had any angels. I've got a message from the top, sir. It's nothing personal, if you take my meaning. But he says that's it. What's it? Time to call it a day, sir. He doesn't think you need go any further, if you forgive me. Ferguson, I'm an honorary fellow of Lincoln College, Oxford. I have dining rights there and limited facilities for improving my mind. Is the Saul Enderby proposing to place me under house arrest? Oh, no, sir. Not like that a bit. Very well, then. You go back to London and I'll go to Oxford. Yes, sir. You did remember me, didn't you, sir, Ferguson? Uh, of course I did. I'm sorry, Hillary. It's only a fleeting visit, I promise. Is it Hills? Bog 
weevil but your giraffe? It's human, Con. She human or the other thing? It's George, Con. George? Which George? Connie, it's me. Damn you, George Smiley. Damn you and all who's sailing you. Welcome to Siberia. Hello, Con. Hills. I said hills. Yes, Con. Go and feed the doggy wogs, and when you've done that, feed the filthy chickadees. Go and hoof it, darling. There's nothing he can do to you now. He shot his bolt. And God knows, so have I. Well, come on. Well, he's not coming back, you know. The old fool's hung up her boots for good. So if that's what you're after, you can tell Saul Enderby to shove it up his smoke and pipe it. <laughs> Connors for the shredder, George. The leech tries to fool me. That's because he's a funk. It's death. The big D, that's what I'm suffering from. That booze you're toting in your pocket or a bloody great gun. It's fatal either way. Oh, goody, let's have lots. How's that cow Anne? Flourishing, I gather. You gather? Wish you would gather. Gather up for good, or else drop it on a hole. All right, what you after? You never did anything yet without a reason. Mud in your eye. And in yours, Con. I need your memory, Con. Bust. Out of order. I've discovered love since we parted. Addles the hormones, rots the teeth. It's one of those old cases that's popped alive again the way they do. Nobody seems to know the full story except Connie. Mice eaten the files, have they? You know how mice are. I know how rats are. How is the bastard, anyway? Which one? Saul Bloody Enderby, of course. Eating well, is he? Coat shiny, nose wet. Opposite you used to say? <laughs> I wouldn't trust Saul Enderby further than I could throw Oliver Lake on. <laughs> Kirov, Connie. Oleg Kirov. Ring a bell. Give me a once upon a time. Toby Esterhaze is still crawling round on his belly, is he? They all remember you, too. You wouldn't work for that shah, George. Not for all the gold in Moscow. You're flying solo. You've got your Carla look. Once upon a time, there was a low-grade Moscow centre hood called Uncle Oleg Kirov. Based on Paris, but worked the Western Circuit. Vladimir put us on to him. Go on from there. Oh, Vladimir, yes. How is the old stoat? Still terrifying the virgins of Paddington, I trust? I expect so. I thought he walked into a bullet the other night. I suppose you want me to tell you who shot him. Well, if you do happen to know, Con, I'm sure we'd all be very grateful for a name. Oh, George Smiley, the Chelsea pensioner himself, God help us. Fought every war since Thermopylae, hot, cold and deep frozen. Give it up, George. Be like the old fool here. Grab yourself a bit of love and... Wait for Armageddon. Tell Max it concerns the Sandman. Vladimir sent me that message three days ago. He said he had proofs. He walked into his bullet trying to get them to me. The fat gentleman on the left is Oleg Kirov, if you remember him. Oh, I'm blind. Fish that lamp over. Ginger pig. Caught at last. It's a fake. No, it's not. 
What a Leipzig. Finally nailed him. He's put on a year or two, hasn't he? That's what hate does for you. Where's the confession? Well, what did he want for it? Well, pay him. Give him the whole bloody reptile fund if he wants it, but pay him. Not until I've heard the authorised version from Connie. Carla would grind Kirov into the dust for this. Carla would get hold of his... Go and see to the mad bitch. Make sure she doesn't chuck herself into the mill race. Still here, Con. Concerns the Sandman and what? The Sandman's putting together a legend for a girl. Again? So it seems. You'll never crack it, George. We couldn't then and you won't now. Carl's beaten you all ends up. He's foxed us. Made an ass of our time. Your time. Both our times. How is she? Seems fine. Loafing and come back in here. Do you want the works? On the record, off the record, all the maybes. students together. Leipzig and Kirov. No, you silly ass. Bob Hope and Fred Astaire. 25 bleeding years ago, Tallinn University, Estonia. Leipzig pulled the girls and the, the ginger pig grunted along behind, gobbling up his leavings, adoring him. And betraying him. Naturally, darling, don't be a ninny. Kirov was cutting his milk teeth for Moscow Centre. Was he? Oh, stop flirting, George. Kiev Training School, course 59. One of the worst vintages they ever had, and that's saying something. And at university? Stirring up the Estonian dissidents, organising them, encouraging them, and then shopping them to the secret police. All charm, our little Kirov. Always was. Leipzig was a rogue, of course. Into all the rackets. Foreign currency, bit of pimping. But he was straight. Never crossed his mind that Kirov could be a stool pigeon. But it was too late. You still love me, George. Like you used to. Kirov betrays the dissident students, the secret police round them up, Leipzig included. Leipzig does the impossible and escapes. Which is more than some of us ever did. George Smiley, born in captivity. And 20 years later, Kirov pops up in Paris. And while in Paris... Assistant to the assistant to the assistant cultural attaché Soviet embassy. La cochon culturelle. It's ginger in frog. Oh, come on, Con, let's cut away the wood. And while in Paris is seen by Vladimir's people and recognised. Kirov, the spy of Tallinn, right? Oh, I've forgotten. Give me a drink. So Vladimir was on the warpath. He needs a befriender. Someone to lead Kirov into sinful ways. So who did he choose? Otto Leipzig. Who better? And Brother Kirov, little suspecting that his darling Otto knows his wicked past, walks into it with his eyes wide shut. Hoo-hoo, Otto, haven't seen you for years. Come and pimp for me like old times. Oh, why did Carla hire a moron like that? May as well have hired him for the Bolshoi Ballet. Oh, 
give it up, George. It's over. It's not a fighting war. Not like in our day. It's grey. Half devils versus half angels. Nobody knows where the goodies are. Carla could be right. Have you ever thought of that? He was Carla's man, but he was no good. But what sort of man? He didn't run moles like bloody Bill Hayden. He never used the Carla apparatus. He didn't use the Carla code. What did he use? A courier sent specially from Moscow, all for him with love from Carla. And that's all we ever knew. He's dead, George. Dead as I am. Bloody nearly. Listen. <clears throat> It's the end of day, a Friday. Somebody's brought a bottle. All the young faces gathered round you, hanging on your every word. Mother Russia spinning her tail. How Carla's human, after all. He's got a soft spot. His one Achilles heel. Carla had a mistress. Who? An Estonian girl. Come on, Con, define, expand, come on. Some partisan heroine he met, fighting behind the lines. Winter 43, 45, he took her to Moscow, set her up as his ideal hag, his Anne. Tutored her, played Pygmalion games with her. And then? Had her topped. One-way ticket to the Gulag. What for? Having doubts, going soft on the revolution. His idea of a marital tiff. <laughs> Mistress had a daughter. Daughter went bonkers. Carla shoved her in the bin. End of story. Oh, I'm tired. Must have been something I Connie! Ate. For 30 tiresome years, we flattered you, stroked you, dried you out, just for your damned memory. Now use it. We owe it to him, to Vladimir. You do. Now wake up and be useful. I want you to go. Now! Hilary, I would like you to make us some more coffee, please. Hilary, would you please make us some coffee? Make it for him. I want you to go. What was her name? Don't know. Guess. Tatiana. Is that an informed guess? Little Tatiana. Went to bed with a gentleman she hadn't been formally introduced to. Painted saucy slogans on official walls. Born? October the 12th, 53. Libra. Didn't savour, though, all that lovely balance. Loved the snow, so they say. Carla used to take her tobogganing. Sneak off for weekends, matters of high business. He didn't show to begin with, the mad part. Pretty child, bright, full of fun. Everything a bolshy baby should be. And then puberty got her, and Mum disappeared. And the shadows gathered and gathered. And they didn't go away. But he still loved her. Adored her. Lived for her. Visited her in the clinics, fronted for her, swept the messes under the carpet, so they say. Who's they, Con? A Red Army doctor, psychiatrist, slipped the leash while he was on a conference in Stockholm. Claims to have treated the girl, Tatiana, in Leningrad Military Hospital, listened to the story of her life, tried to cure her. Shocks, pills, didn't work. Daughter of a high official, had the delusion that her father had a mother bumped off. And what became of the doctor? No, George. Yes, George. He walked into a bullet the day after his debriefing. One of those nice soft ones that don't hurt. Bill Hayden must have sent Carla his address. Thank you, Con. You filled in the gaps for me. Hilary? Hilary, you heard all that, didn't you? Do you remember when you had your nervous breakdown and we had to send you away from the circus 
You signed a piece of paper saying you'd never talk to people about your work there. All the things you overheard by chance. Whoever may come here, whoever it is... Oh, leave her alone! What did you come here for if you know it all anyway? I was sleepwalking. I've woken up. Oh, go home, George Smiley. Goodbye, Con. I'm sorry. George, that courier, the one who plays the messenger boy between Carl and the ginger pig. What about him? His name's Kraski. First name, Stefan. Doubles as a hitman in his spare time. Thank you. Trouble with couriers is you can never get near enough to buy them. Elusive swine. Go well, George. You too, Con. like a soldier, they say. How does a soldier die? He was shot. Tell me what I can do. You... You can do nothing. Karl Marx was right. Self-defense is given only to barbarians. You are not a barbarian, Sergei. You are a poet. My husband died like a soldier of cancer. My lover was a Jew. He died of a surfeit of opinions. My daughter lives or dies or lives again according to what they want of her. I myself have died a few times these last few days. I do not intend to do it again. Leave them there. I will attend to them. Yes, yes. Oh, you are feverish, madam. I shall fetch you a doctor. Well, don't you let me you fetch you. You trust no one. Please see that your husband understands. Electricians, hawkers, meter readers, anyone asking for a struck of her. You think I'm mad, or well, maybe I am, but my enemies are very sane. I have money. Not much, but you shall have whatever there is. Oh, madam, madam, madam. I...
I'd like to spend some time here. Membership costs 175 marks. This is a one-time annual subscription entitling you to enter free for a full year as many times as you wish. You should complete the form in whatever name you wish. I will file it personally. All you have to do is to remember the name under which you joined and you will be admitted without formalities. I should advise the house. Concerning Herr Kretschmer, is he from Saxony by any chance? Yes. Is Herr Kretschmer in the house tonight? Herr Kretschmer is a man with commitment, sir. He's obliged to divide his time between several establishments. If he comes, have the goodness to let me know. He'll be here at 11 exactly, sir. has arrived. I understand you were once a business partner to an acquaintance of mine named Otto Leipzig. I happened to be visiting Hamburg and I wondered if you could tell me where he is. His address doesn't appear to be listed anywhere. Who are you, please? Otto called me Max. And your business with a Leipzig, if I may ask? I represent a large company. Among other interests, we own a literary and photographic agency for freelance reporters. So? Recently, the business relationship between Herr Leipzig and my company was revived, initially by means of the telephone. I came here to commission further work, assuming, of course, Herr Leipzig is in a position to do it. 
Of what nature was this work, please, uh, that her Leipzig sent to you, Her Max? It was a negative photograph of erotic content. My firm always insists on negatives. Herr Leipzig knew this naturally. I rather think it must have been taken from that window. A peculiarity of the photograph is that Herr Leipzig himself was modeling in it. One therefore assumes that a friend or business partner may have operated the camera. There is another aspect. Yes. Unhappily, the gentleman who was acting as intermediary on this occasion met with a serious accident shortly after the negative was put in our care. The usual line of communication with Herr Leipzig was therefore severed. How saw an accident? What sort of accident? A fatal one. I came here to talk to Otto and to warn him. No disturbances. Yes, sir. You said Herr Leipzig was an old acquaintance of your parent company. As I believe you yourself were long ago, Herr Kretschmer. Herr Leipzig corresponded with my company through a certain general. A few years ago, the general was obliged to move from Paris to London, but Otto kept in touch with him. Until his accident? Precisely. It was a traffic accident, an old man, a bit careless. He was shot. It wasn't suicide or an accident or anything like that. Naturally. You have met Otto? You know him? I've met him once. Where? I'm not at liberty to say. Have you brought me something, such as a letter of introduction, a card, for instance? No. Nothing to show. That's a pity. Perhaps when I've seen Herr Leipzig, I shall understand your question better. But you've seen it, evidently, this photograph. You have it with you, maybe? I wish to explain to you. I run a decent house here. I'm not in the habit of photographing clients. Other people sell ties, I sell sex. The important thing to me is to conduct my business in an orderly and correct manner. But this was not business. This was friendship. Let's go in. Want a drink? Scotch, cognac? Thank you, no. You knew him, Herr Max, that old general? You were personally connected with him? Yes. He was something, I understand. He was indeed. A lion, hmm? A lion. Uh, Otto was crazy about him. Klaus, my name is Klaus. Klaus, he would say, that Vladimir, I love that man. A lot of people do not believe in Otto. Your parent company also, they do not always believe in Otto. This is understandable, I make no reproach. But the general, he believed in Otto. Not in every detail, but in the big things. I also believed him in the big things. You're sure you have nothing for me, Herr Max? Beyond the photograph, I have nothing for you. The general was shot in England. Yes. But you consider, nevertheless, Otto II is in danger. Yes, but I think he has chosen to be. Me too. I also. This is my clear impression. Um, many years ago, Otto Leipzig went to prison for me. In those days, I was not respectable. Now I uh, have money I can't afford to be. We stole something. He was caught. He lied and took the whole rap. When he came out, I wanted to pay him. He declined my office. Uh, Max, you're an Englishman. You will appreciate my position. Yes, of course, indeed. Uh, maybe two months ago, the old general comes through on the telephone. He needs Otto urgently. Not tomorrow, but tonight. Then the old man tells me, I sent you a letter for him, guarded with your life. 
Next day, a letter comes. Express for Kretschmer, postmark London. I find Otto. He's hiding from trouble again. No money. <laughs> Only one suit he's got, but he dresses like a film star. I uh, give him the old man's letter. Which is the bulky one? A long letter, many pages. Klaus, he said to me, lend me some money. I got to go to Paris. I lent him 500 marks, no problem. He disappears. A month ago, he came to see me. Here in this room, I'm being frank. He was, well, I would say excited. He wished to use the nightclub. He called it a honey trap. He would bring a man to the club, an Ivan, as we call Russians. This man was the target, he called him the target. He said, this is the chance of my life. Everything I have waited for. What could I say? I owed him. Also, Klaus, I want you to photograph us. I said, no problem. I have cameras, video, the latest kind made in Germany. He also wanted me to record conversations. No problem. I have my people. You follow me? Did he give you any idea of why he wished to blackmail this man? He was not precise. A step on the general's ladder, he said. For me, the target is enough, but for the general, he's only a step on the ladder. For Max, also. Is he right? And when it was over, what did Otto think he had achieved? He laughed. No, I've taken him over the edge, and he can't get back. That's all that happened. And you haven't seen Otto again since then? No, Max, not since. But you do have an address where I might find him. Otto lives in bad circumstances. One cannot alter that. Giving him money does not improve his social standards. He remains, forgive me, a gypsy. I uh, strongly advise you to take care. Otto will be very angry when he hears the general has been shot. How much did they charge you down there? I'm sorry? Downstairs, how much did they take from you? 175 marks for membership. With the drinks, that's at least 200. I'll tell them at the desk to give it back to you. You English are poor these days. Too many trade unions. <laughs> How did you like the show? It was very artistic. Artistic is right. Maybe you should have more fun in life. Maybe I should have done. Creed Otto for me. I will. And uh, you have nothing for me. No papers, for example. No. Pity. But you're a good fellow. You're loyal, I can see. Make a safe journey. <laughs>